Okay. So recording started. Right. So this uh, I've taken the same salary data set here. But if you look at uh, the algorithm, right, linear model, I've taken SGD regressor, stochastic gradient descent regressor. If I took linear regression as the class, right, that will be using normal equation as the solver. Here, SGD regressor is using stochastic gradient descent as the solver. The advantage of stochastic gradient descent is it can handle huge volumes of data. When data is small, no, we prefer linear regression only. Linear regression algorithm. Because it you now it finds it in a single shot and it finds the best value in you no know, one go. In one go. Right? But SGD regressor will actually learn. You know, it starts with some random equation or random theta and then slowly learns. Two approaches. One on a small data set works well, the linear regression, which is based out of normal equation. Two stochastic gradient descent regressor, which learns cumulatively, and it's going to be useful in on a huge volume of data. The disadvantage with uh, normal equation is it may get stuck with uh, dummy variable trap. Okay, dummy variable trap. When you have more than one, uh, more than two correlated columns in your data set, it may get stuck in dummy variable trap, and it may not find the best thetas that is one problem if there are more than more columns than rows then also the model may not the normal equation may not work well so to avoid these two problems we should be using three problems basically huge volume of data dummy variable trap more number of uh, variables than number of rows more variable more number of features than rows more the number of columns than rows, right? These are all same statements. More number of variables than rows, more number of features than rows, more number of columns than rows. Any of these situations, we should be using SGD regressor. So I have taken the data set, you know, as usual, I looked into it. And then the first thing I want to do is split the data into train test because test set will give us, give us an opportunity to test our pre-processing code and test the model, how it's going to work on an unseen data. Okay, unseen data for the algorithm as well as for the data scientist. Okay, so I split the data. And then, you no, know, this is all pre-processing code we used previously. If you have gone through the code, right, you will be familiar with this. I'm collecting all the, you know, distinct values of each category, each categorical column. And then, you know, doing a categorical conversion here. You know, I'm doing a dumb conversion. All categorical columns, I'm doing it. I'm converting into label encoding. Okay. And then, uh, you know, I took the best values to replace. Hope you can see my screen as I am talking. Yes, sir. So, yeah, so here I took the mode value for years of study, qualification for no mode value for qualification, mode value for degree, and educational institution also I have taken mode value. These are the best values that can replace nulls. And I collected them, kept them in variables because I have to use the same values in test set. In production, if you have to use the same values, right, you need to pickle these values also. Do you remember pickling? We are, we are saving the model, right? Do you remember that? Yes. Sir. I showed you. Yes. Yeah, I showed you how to save model, right? Along with the model, you need to save these values also, so that you can use these values in production, right? In the pre-processing, we will load these values and replace them in production also if there are if there are nulls, and then you know we'll uh, 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 re reload the model and pass it to the pass it to data. Then it will work well. So you need to remember this. You need to save the model, save the preprocessors. We'll see some, you know, preprocessors like uh, standard scaling. This one also should be saved. Along with that, we need to save these values also into pickle individually. Individual variables we'll save, and then individually we need to load, and individually we need to use. No? Where you'll use like this: fill and a loaded value, fill and a loaded value, like that. You need to use. Got it? 
Any questions on the statement I made? Okay, good. So after you know, talking about test also, I'll talk about. These points are very important. If we, if we ignore these, the model looks well on the train set, but not well on the test set and production. You may think there is some problem with the model. No, it is about you know, the way we have, we have understood the concept. Okay. So I saved the best values here, then replaced them, right? replaced them, and then split the data into train X and train Y. All the input columns into one, uh, you know, one numpy array, right? or data frame it is, uh, LOC, right? So it is data frame. And then, you know, all the Y values into the salary column into one series object. Now, before I, build a model SGD regressor model. Previously, we were using linear regression here. Instead of that, we are using SGD regressor. So before I use SGD regressor, I need to do scaling. Okay. What is scaling? If you look at this, uh, if you look at uh, the gradient descent algorithms nodes, at the end I showed you, if the data is not on similar scale, can you can you see this how to con converge faster screen? Yes, now we no. can see. Yes, now we can yeah. see. So you know the when the data is not on similar scale, all features are not on similar scale, your theta and cost function graph will be like this. Bowl is not going to be steep. Right? Bowl is not going to be steep, it's going to be like plate. Right? And then there is, you know, the the bowl is not going to be round also. It, it's, it's going to be like plate and it's going to be like, uh, you know, oval shape. Okay. So if the oval shape is there, then, you know, the, the slope, slope of the tangent at every theta, slope of the tangent at every theta is almost close to zero. So that way the convergence is going to be very slow. Sometimes, you know, maybe 100, in 100 iterations, you may reach the global minima but it may take uh, 10,000 iterations. So to reduce number of iterations and converge faster, we should do standard scaling or min-max scaling or divide by maximum. Got it? So that is, that is what we are doing here. For SGD regressor, for this algorithm, you should definitely do the standard scaling or min-max scaling. So there are two ways of doing you know, scaling. I'm using standard scaling. You have seen what is min-max scaling in there? PPT, right? So subtract minimum and divide by maximum minus minimum. So, you know, in the advantage with min max scaling is if you want to bring whole data to uh, data in the range, right? All columns, you know, first column in the range of minus two to plus two. Second column also in the range of minus two to plus two. Third column also minus two to, you can specify the range in min max scaling. But in standard scaling, that, that facility is not there. It may fall, you know, between minus 20 and plus 20 or minus 10 and plus 10 or minus 5 and plus 5. Sometimes it may be minus 5 and minus plus 3 also. What is standard scaling? It is nothing but z-score calculation. For each value in a column, we are calculating z-score. If you have 10 columns, right? For all columns, we you know the standard scalar will find out the mean, will find out the standard deviation and then subtract mean from each column, x1 minus mu1 divided by sigma1, x2 minus mu2 divided by sigma2, like that it will do, right? For 10 columns, 10 mu, 10 sigmas it will find. In, from each column, it is going to subtract the mean and divide by standard deviation. That's what standard scaling is. Here I create an object and I said uh, fit transform on, I think I, So, so I did fit transform on train X, right? When I when I did fit, what happens? When I did transform, what happens? Can somebody explain? Can somebody explain? You know, on a standard scalar, when I did fit, what happens? When I did transform, what happens? So it actually converts the data, transforms the data in uh -huh. fit transform. 
Uh, and in uh, fit, it actually generates the equations and solves yeah. them and finds the model. Finally, but here, you know, in standard scalar, do we have a model? In standard scalar, do we have a model? Mm, no, I believe. No, but what is standard scalar doing? It's actually converting the data into standard scale, all the input columns into standard ah, scale. Right. In that process, what is a, what is understanding? What is transformation? Right. Now, x1, x2, x3, and y. Suppose that this is your data. You can see me drawing, right? Can you see me? Drawing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. X1, x2, x3, and y. Suppose that three input variables are one, one target variable is there. When I did this standard scalar, I am using only X. Okay. I am not considering Y. Okay. I am considering only X's. Okay. When I do standard scalar and fit, when I say fit right, it will find out mu1, sigma1, mu2, sigma2, mu3, sigma3. Okay. As soon as say I say transform, right? That's when it is applying, right? It is calculating. No x1 minus mu1 by sigma1, x1 minus mu1 by sigma1, x1 minus mu1, sorry, mu1 by sigma1, like that. X2 minus mu2 by sigma2, x2 minus mu2 by sigma2, and so on. X3 minus mu3 by sigma3 x3 minus mu3 by sigma3 like that got it fit will find these you know, these uh, means and standard deviations of each column keep them aside transform will actually apply it okay got it got it any questions Yes, no. Yeah, got it, sir. Okay. So why am I actually stopping here and explaining this is fit is understanding. That's what you need to understand. If it is a if it is an algorithm, the understanding is going to be coefficients, finding coefficients. If it is a standard scalar, finding mean and you know standard deviation. If it is min max scalar, right? What is understanding? What is min max scalar formula? X minus minimum minus uh, by max. Right? Yeah. X minus max minus. Yeah, max. Right? What is finding in this uh, min max scalar? If I say fit, what what will it find and keep aside? Minimum and maximum, right? For each column, it will find minimums and maximums. When I say transform, it will apply this formula. That's it. Got it? Yes, no. Sir, come again, sir. So in, in standard scalar, the understanding is going to be mean and standard deviation. Okay. In min max scalar, the understanding is going to be minimum and maximum of each column. Yeah, th th this happens when fit transform is executed. So when you when you say fit transform, there are two methods. Okay. There are two functions, one fit and one transform, right? Fit will find out the necessary values to transform the data. Yes, yes. And it, this point is very important, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually stressing it because if you have to build custom transformers, what code to put in fit, what code to put in transform, you should know. In custom transformers, you write, you know, individual fit method, individual transform method. But while while calling, right, you can call the custom transformer dot fit transform. Internally, with super the super class, you know, transform mixing class will have fit transform method, which will actually call one after the other. Got it? Got it, right? 
Can I move on? Yep. Yeah, good. Okay. So now, you know, we are applying this, uh, we, are, we have taken the class, SGD regressor, and I have taken random state. Anybody remember what is random state? Or, or uh, random seed? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, yeah, please, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, maintain the same index. Right? Ah, yeah. ah, maintain the same index. Or any random values generated internally, the same random value will be generated. First time, whatever random value generated, the same random value will be generated. So random state. And then we are fitting the SGD, you know, the standardized X values and Y. If the data is not standardized, you will get into this problem. Right. Non, you know, bowl not, not, not being steep problem, and the, the algorithm will not converge fast. No, I would recommend you to comment out this code, right? This uh, standard scaling code, and try to take uh, the original train X and build the model and see what happens. Okay, so I fitted the model, I predicted values on train, right? Standard, standardized train, and now I cal I'm calculating mean squared error and. Uh, no, R square score. I've got 62% accuracy. Okay. So this is uh, this is uh, no linear reg no, linear regression. No multiple linear regression. There are no uh, polynomial uh, regression things applied here. Okay. So now we have to see whether model can be improved or not. Okay. So I have got 62% accuracy. That means if you understood the gradient descent algorithm properly, can you see convergence and divergence diagram? Yes. Yes. Right. In this convergence divergence diagram, right, it would have reached somewhere here. Theta would have reached somewhere here. Is my statement right? We got 62 percent accuracy. It, it is an SGD, so there is a possibility. Yeah, it is SGD, right? There is a possibility. If it is normal equation, are we sure that uh, that's the best value we can get? If it is a normal equation and you got 62 percent accuracy, are you sure that that is the best value you can get and is there anything that we can do with the algorithm? Or you know, do you think algorithm did not perform well or somewhere you know, stopped in, be in between, something like that? In normal equation, do we have that kind of a concept? No. No, right? It's a it's a damn sure, you know, single shot thing. It is a it's a solving equations approach, it is. There is nothing cumulative learning. Here we are learning cumulatively, so there is a chance that the algorithm would have stopped somewhere here. Maybe because iterations were not sufficient, right? Or maybe the bowl is very, very slant like that. And you know, maybe somewhere here, right? We have got the almost zero slope and it is not converging, right? These two problems may be there, right? So algorithm is not performing well. That means we can, we can, we may have to, um, uh, if, if this is the case, right? If this is the case, what we should do to make the model converge uh, to the global minima? If this is the case, right? They stopped somewhere in between, or you know, reached only halfway through and stopped in between. To next time when you execute to to make it reach to the global minima, what we should do? What are we all play with? Uh... Uh, Learn, learning, rate, learning, learning rate. Should we increase learning rate or decrease learning rate? Decrease. Why, why decrease? <laughs> you are on right path. You are on right path, but why decrease? Why not increase? Steps will be step uh, size. No, you know, I think you, we should increase, right? Step size is small. That's where it actually made, you know, till here only. If the step size is a little bigger, right? It would have jumped, jumped, jumped and came came down here, right? 
but maybe because it got stuck with the smaller step size if we, uh, if we make it bigger it will yes it will come out of that uh, the stuck stuck point ah uh, come out of stuck point is different actually yeah come out of stuck maybe that's also a pro, a, 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 pro, a, a problem uh, good, that's a good point that's a good point so because we are using stochastic gradient descent you no know, the parabola the curve is not going to be the curve is not going to be give me one second the curve is not going to be uh, the neat like this right it's going to be like that right so it we do have stuck somewhere here and it is actually jumping around and number of iterations may not have been sufficient so it would it, it like so in that case right increase the number of iterations here also you can do two things increase the number of iterations so that it will reach till the global minimum or increase the step size the learning rate that is good you know you guys are grasping well right so that's the thing where that is called as hyperparameter tuning okay so here i did that so on the in this you know sgd regressor there are many hyperparameters we will understand all of them okay the last function the penalty alpha right all these things we will understand right here eta eta 0 is the hyperparameter we need to play with right so eta 0 i actually made a little you know, i i actually played with it and then i have got uh, i'll i'll actually play with it right now right i have got something here okay so so default value 0.01 for eta 0 if i increase it a little bit that i'll see what is what's going to happen okay let me let me play with this and show you so let me execute the code and show you so this is very important this is very important in deep learning this is what we do so these all steps you know so i am just executing them right i built a model and i got this much accuracy now the default value right, i think you can see hyperparameter tuning not yet sir yeah you know right so eta zero you know when i actually try to this is this is from i, I think uh, the api i got i copied it and put kept it here and default value is 0.01 so here and uh, do we need and you know max iteration see this the default value is 1000 do we need 1000 that's what you know here when i actually called the sgd regressor without passing any hyperparameters it is using default values so i am actually trying to take my own values here and execute okay, let me increase the the eta 0 right i made it 0.01 0.1 right because i thought the model is not performing well and it, it did not reach the global minima it actually reached global minima even on the Yeah, even on the linear regression we got this much accuracy i think i i forgot but you know so i increased this eta 0 to 0.1 the number should be between 0 and 1 only okay now i executed see it is it is it is coming it is giving a little less value little less value right with uh, let me try to increase the number of iterations here even then it is giving less value maybe it is diverging right at some point in time right? we cannot see that here how the model is actually converging or diverging but in deep learning we can see clearly what's happening there okay but you know it reached some place and then it would have diverged you know it would, it would have been like this it, it would have reached somewhere here and then it started diverging diverging and maybe somewhere here it stopped you can see my screen right so it would have reached somewhere down below and then or maybe maybe till here it reached and then it started diverging slowly diverging so let me show you that so i i i increased 0.01 to 0.1 i got less accuracy i'll make this 0.2 that it is you no know, reducing 0.3 see that see that it reduced even more 0.5 see that right it is diverging right when you increase the the alpha value the value is actually degrading that means 
the model you know till some point it is actually converging till some point it is converging and then it started diverging again right maybe uh, you know maybe in the initial random theta the value is okay and it reached uh, till you know random the value may not be right the, the the error may be too huge right and the algorithm tried to converge 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 at one point in time it started diverging okay because of the step size okay got it got it right. so let me let me decrease this value 0.001 see that max number of iterations reached before convergence okay so it is throwing error a warning saying that max so this uh, this value is not calculated now it is actually kept the old value and then it is trying to show right see this see this r square score we got negative i said we are going to get negative values also r square score right so when your step size is too small it did not uh, even reach the place you know let me show you this see it improved a little bit improved even more but we are getting still we are getting this uh, you know max iterations reached so before convergence so the slope of the tangent is still still there or the error the, the difference between the previous error and current error is more than tolerance there is tolerance here serious tolerance okay so the error between the previous iteration and the current iteration the difference between the errors of the previous iteration and current iteration is more than the tolerance you know that's where it is saying that you know max iterations reached before convergence right the condition to satisfy condition to break the loop the condition to break the loop are you no know, making these steps right what is the gradient descent algorithm doing it is actually moving step 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 like that right so to stop these steps you know even after reaching here even though the slope is kind of close to zero it is still making steps because the previous error and current errors difference is greater than the tolerance this value okay so even though you see right if you if i put like maybe 7 even though you see 62.62 it is saying that you no know, maximum iterations reached before convergence because this tolerance condition is not being satisfied got it got it oh, what is the tolerance condition here sir we i'm not able to see that that is early early stopping yesterday i said early stopping means you are you know at at this point you know at every at every stage at every stage you will have theta right at every at every step you will have theta right do you agree right yes. for for current data you have an equation you substituted your values and calculated error right predicted values and calculated total error okay for the current theta okay yes. and next theta also you substituted values predicted values and then uh, calculated error the the previous error and the current error are the current error and the next error i should have said previous and current right current error and the next error the difference is called as you know uh, uh, the difference we will take the algorithm will take the difference and if the difference is, is greater than a value called as tolerance right? suppose that you got you know 60 error in the previous iteration and the current iteration also you got 60 difference is zero okay yeah. that means model is not improving anymore do you agree with the statement previous iteration you got 60 error current iteration also you got 60 error you looked at the difference between the previous error and current error it is zero yeah. that means model is not improving anymore the theta yeah. is not moving anymore yeah. do you agree huh? yes The previous error is 50, and current error is um, you know 
there is difference so five difference is there right we wanted to see the difference is minimal because you know at this bottom right bottom of the pit almost all places you will get you no know, kind of minute difference error bottom of the pit the slope is going to be very small the alpha is going to be the the eta zero is going to be very small when you multiply it's going to be very small you are subtracting subtracting it from theta right so here the values are going to be almost similar but how much difference now how much tolerance we will see is the number 0.001 is the tolerance if the difference is greater than this number still continue doing steps if it is less than it stop and break and come out that is tolerance got it so internally there will be some tolerance value internally yeah this is default value this is the algorithm you know this is the api the implementation whatever this i got it from api these are the default values make max iteration tolerance you know the alpha value eta zero value okay right these are all these are all so the power t right this is like uh, to calculate that uh, uh, learning schedule t by T plus whatever I showed you formula yesterday, right? So those values also. I'll show the API clearly, maybe tomorrow. Right? We are just looking at it today. Okay. So <clears throat> that means now the max iterations are completed before reaching the tolerance, right? Ma, yes, yes. You know, if you if you are not getting warning, that means you no know, the algorithm uh, uh, reached you know before maybe at 70 maybe 70 or 60 iterations it reached the global minimum and uh, bro bro broke out of the loop and uh, showing the values okay and maybe by 60 maybe maybe by 80 maybe by 99th iteration it would, it would have reached the global minimum or it reached the condition tolerance condition that's called the early stopping early stopping okay got it right so this is building a model is nothing right fit and then predict and whatever right but how it is working you need to understand so is the tolerance condition is the only condition for early stopping or is there anything else tolerance is the one and i think we should look into the api tolerance is the one only uh, only one condition yes number of iterations also right number of iterations there is a new parameter here no n iterations on change if you look at api right you will find it you know these guys will add new things in there every 3 months there will be new thing Number of iterations with no improvement. Yeah, to wait before early stopping. See this. So, how many iterations you want to see that the difference is not changing? Got it. Zero point zero zero one. Are do do? Would you like to look at the previous and current only, or for five iterations you want to no consecutive to five iterations? Every you know previous and current, previous and current is not changing. Default is five. Then it will break out. You can change it. Maybe ten iterations, twenty iterations. You can look at. Got it? Yeah. yeah. The same concept is there in deep learning also. Same concept is there. Okay. So we build the model. Now we need to test it on test set. Same thing. We apply all the transformations. We know we do uh, that. Uh, Standard scalar transformation. Only transform we are doing. See this? No fit. If I do fit again, right? On the small set, it will find the mean and standard deviation. They are not going to be general, right? Generalized. Okay. So train set uh, mean and standard deviations are generalized. So when you do transform, right? The values saved there, the means and standard deviations of each column saved there will be applied here. For that reason, you need to save this standard scalar also. Into a pickle file, and then use it in the product. Okay. So now you predict, you calculate. So I have got 66 percent accuracy. Now I am doing a polynomial regression. Okay. 
So the Paul Nevel regression again pipeline. You remember this pipeline concept, grid set CV and all that, right? So I will go into this. You know, once after I finish the uh, difference between the uh, what you call it as uh, Durga's question, right? Uh, the uh, normal equation and uh, gradient descent. So let me take a white sheet, whiteboard. So you will get clarity, okay? I, I'm not jumping, no, I, I'm not jumping guns here. I gave you a brief introduction, right? Play with the code, and uh, I'll give you one more file which I actually you know, wrote everything I wrote. And uh, look at the code and try to play with it. If you get time, you practice on a data set, come back with questions tomorrow. That way it will solidify well and you'll remember well and you know you can do something with this, okay? So if you don't practice, right, how much ever I, I talk, it's going to be empty talk only. You will not get anything into my, you will think that you, you got everything. It, it seems like you got everything, but when you have to do something, right, you will not be able to do it. Only problem is that uh, practice. You need to do practice, okay? So let me, I'll start for questions, okay? I'm taking two sections, okay? One for normal equation, another for gradient descent. Okay, now what is the problem? Uh, what are we actually trying to solve? So, uh, uh, Durga, would you like to talk? You know, uh, would you like to answer my questions? Yes, sir, in the salary data set, we have so many features. Ah. So we want to choose the best features and using those no. best features and predict the CLD. So for the no. best feature, we no. find out the no. coefficient. No, wait, wait, wait. So what do what what we have and what is the problem statement? You know, in our salary data set, what do what do we have? What do we have and what what is the what are we trying to do? We in have the data. Yeah, we have data, right? So X1, X2, and so on, Xn. I'm calling them experience, right? Uh, lines of code, right? Uh, tolerance, you know, whatever. Those features are there. And then Y value is the salary, right? This is the data set we have, okay? What are we trying to solve? What is the problem? I have this data. What, what do I need to do, basically? You need to find out an equation. Why? So to predict, predict, the, predict the salary. Yeah, predict, right? If a new person comes in, new person, right, comes in, we need to predict salary. Right? That is the problem statement. Okay? To predict the salary, what we need to have? We need to have a linear equation between the inputs and outputs. Why am I saying linear equation? Why not other kind of equation? Because the algorithm is linear regression. Okay, Linear regression has got a linear equation. Okay, So the hypothesis function for this linear regression is linear equation. So the linear equation should be like this. Theta is zero plus theta on x1 plus n1 theta on xn okay let me let me let me do one thing sorry not here so the linear regression hypothesis function is theta 0 plus theta on x1 plus n1 so theta on xn is equal to y cap okay the predicted value so here our goal you know in this normal equation our gradient descent our goal is to find out these coefficients. You know, not the best features. I take all the all the features here, x1 to xn, and then find out the coefficients. Suppose you know, so so you know the 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 equation is like this. You know, 10 plus 20 x1 plus 30 x2 plus and so on. Maybe you know, maybe 5 xn is equal to y cap 
okay so we found these coefficient thetas are what we want to find okay there are two approaches in this approach right what we will do is we will form equations no if i if i have no 5 7 9 10 10 and maybe you know 10000 8000 8 6 4 5 7 maybe you know 5000 like that you know maybe 9 8 9 3 2 8 8000 so like that data is there right what i will do is i will form the equations because the linear regression algorithm hypothesis function is linear equation so i am going to form the equations like theta 0 into 5 plus theta 1 into sorry 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 theta 0 plus theta 0 plus theta 1 into 5 plus theta 2 into 7 plus theta 3 into 9 plus theta 4 into 10 is equal to 10000 Okay. And then theta zero plus theta one into eight plus theta two into six plus theta three into four plus theta four into seven is equal to five thousand. Okay. Theta zero plus theta one into nine plus theta two into three plus theta three into two. Uh, I think uh, eight. Nine three plus theta four into two is equal to eight thousand. Like this, sir, the algorithm will form the equations and solve all of them at once using this formula. X transpose x whole inverse x transpose y. Basically, it is not forming the equations at all. It is taking all this data and all this data, putting it into x and y. It is finding all the thetas. You know those theta with those theta, we form this equation. When a new person comes in, I will substitute those x values and predict the y cap. Got it? Mm. Yes, sir. Right? No, no feature selection here. Right? Got it? Yes. Yeah. So feature selection is also there. You know, when I was speaking, I I would have mixed this and that. when you are coefficient right after after solving all the equations suppose that for x2 the coefficient is 0.005 and the other coefficients are big 10 20 5 50 like that right that means this feature is not that important okay that is one way of feature selection after finding the coefficients after you found the coefficients of the equation of, uh, of the equation The, of the of the model you will know which feature is important which feature is not important okay do you got the clarity yes right so this is one approach this is one approach of finding coefficients the problem with this approach is if the data is huge this x transpose x whole inverse x transpose y equation will fail because your memory may not be sufficient to do that mathematical calculation Got it? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because of that reason, gradient descent algorithm we used. Gradient descent algorithm is found as stochastic gradient descent or gradient descent. So I'll talk about gradient descent here. Now, in gradient descent, instead of finding these theta in a single chart, it will take a random theta somewhere like that, and then you know, if your data is somewhere here, right? it will slowly 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 move towards the global minima and reach to the global minima. this is another approach instead of taking all the you know finding all the thetas in a single chart we are finding we are learning theta we start with some junk junk theta and move in the right direction towards the global minima. ultimately either the normal equation or gradient descent will reach to the same thetas Maybe similar theta, I should say. In gradient descent, right? Sometimes it may not reach exactly the perfect theta because of that learning rate, learning schedule, and you know other you know constraints, right? So it may not reach to the exact place, but almost nearer to the 
place where the normal equation found. The theta is you know, found by normal equation. Got it? Mm, yes, sir. So ultimately, the goal is to find the best fit line. Best fit line. Either way, we are trying to find this best fit line. One line, one equation that will make the predictions. And after finding the equation, if the coefficients are small, the, the feature is not important. If the coefficient is negative, the feature is affecting the predicted, the, the target value negatively, right? negatively correlated. If there is a positive, positively correlated, you know, strength. Okay? The magnitude actually gives you the strength. Got it? Yes, sir. Now clear, right? Yeah. So in this case of gradient descent, we'll start with the random value, right? So how to ah. choose the random value? No, random means random, right? There is no two choice. No, it, can be, it can be too far from the existing data. Set. Yes, data. even if it is too far, it will converge faster. You know, I explained that yesterday, right? So theta is here, <coughs> J of theta is here. If you chose, you know, some theta somewhere here, right? The slope of the tangent is going to be high here, right? The slope of the tangent is going to be high. The formula I have to calculate next theta is theta is equal to theta minus alpha into slope. Right? The slope is big, so from here it will jump. It will jump, you know. Jump is going to be high. If you see, if you see the diagram there, see this? First jump is high. Next jump is a little low, little low, little low. But even if you choose a number which is very far, in three, four jumps it will come down. And then from there it will move slow. Got it? Got it. So I think you know I will stop it here, and tomorrow we will actually look into the pipeline and all that stuff, right? This this pipeline thing is a bit confusing thing, right? So you know I already uploaded I think this uh, GDA regressor EDA file, right? You guys actually go through it because I have some work to handle here. I am taking only 40 minutes class today, so you go through this file. I have done EDA and everything on the same file and then applied a GD regressor. Okay. And uh, I got some improvement there. So please have a look at this and then come back with questions tomorrow. Uh, sir, one question. Uh, so in the SGD regression, the yeah. because we have multiple thetas. Uh, random value will be selected for each of those theta. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then yeah. Uh, all, all, all of them will be happening in the same See, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Your point is correct. See, I am saying a line is selected. It is. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Sir, class one, my Sir, class Sir, sir, class one. Malik, sir. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. See, I am on the phone, phone internet, right? You know, it gets disconnected. So that's what I, my worry was. Okay. So I am saying we are going to draw a line, right? Which is nothing but. Random theta, right? If it is two variables, right, it's going to be plain because you will have one more. If it is two variables, right? So this is theta zero, theta one, and this is theta two, right? So it is going to be plain then, you no? Know, random plane. It's going to be drawing. So what your understanding is correct. If you have hundred thetas, hundred thetas will be randomly chosen. Period. Yeah, my point is uh, randomly is, uh, 100 theta will be randomly chosen mm -hmm. and uh, all the next 100 will be uh, identified uh, simultaneously, not one after. Yes, yes, sir. yes, yeah. yes. Sir. Okay, clear. Sir. So that was there in this uh, slide. It may take some time. But... Right. Right. Any other questions? No, sir, sir, it's yeah, a question is based on the terminology like 
we we are using alpha or eta for the learning rate eta only you know andrew ng used alpha i used alpha i would have you know converted to eta but you know there is confusion there you know there is another variable called as learning rate sorry mm -hmm. learning schedule oh, sorry no 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 shrinkage parameter you know tomorrow or monday we'll see that right uh, shrinkage parameter tomorrow or friday we'll see you know, regularization that is called as alpha in the algorithm in the scikit-learn it uses alpha terminology but that's fine i think you got it right so. yeah the, the definition you have shown uh, has both values so so which one is which one to use is the confusion there so in the api you see alpha also that's what your confusion right yeah 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 both are there right alpha yeah that alpha i'll explain later eta zero is the learning rate okay okay and you know uh, we have got other parameters also i'll explain them slowly one after the other i'll try to induce if i try to dump everything in a single day right you will get confused so this alpha i'll talk about it later so in theory whatever we discuss as alpha terminology is nothing but eta eta zero eta zero yeah and is is learning rate step size or both are same or it's different yesterday also we learning rate i'll explain we... i'll explain this learning rate has got more complexity right you know the uh, learning schedule you know and all that you can give here i'll explain you know tomorrow after showing you this and you personally experience a little bit then i'll show you i'll okay. explain then you'll understand better if i keep on talking right you, you you will get lost in the concept you will not get anything so just go through the code play with it and try to change the values and play with it and you know use whatever value you want there and then tomorrow we will discuss more okay okay yeah. so stopping recording if you have